Well, hello there, Pisces. This is Cindy from the New Moon Tarot. I'm a witch, a tarot card reader, and all of my information is down below in the description box if you would like to order your own private reading. Now, this is a general love reading for Pisces for the week of May 18th. So, we have Abracadabra with Wings. Um, this is fortune, fate, good luck. Um, and we also have the Wheel of Fortune that showed up here. So, there's a lot of like destiny or fate or luck or however you want to put it um, in this reading. Sorry about that. That was a little bit of a sneeze. Um, allergy season is fun. So we have the Two of Cups. Um, this is that partnership card where the two of you are a complement to one another. And this is very much a chaser and runner kind of energy that's showing up here right now. This may not resonate with any or with everybody, um, but there's enough of you that are having this experience. So if it doesn't resonate, check your other placements. But we have the two of cups. You see that the two cats are all paired up and that there's this couple. They're very into one another. It's a very... It's a meeting of the minds and a meeting of ideals. And you have... A balance to your relationship. Um, you complement one another. You suit one another. Where one is strong, the other is weak. Where one is weak, the other is strong. So you balance out each other's faults as well. However, there's a lot of chaotic energy here. Let's take a look. So we have the lovers. And again, like two of cups and then here's the lovers. Like I said, lots of energy here. However, check it out. Here's the five of wands. So there is some discord here, some fighting. And also it's hard to see, but there's the chariot. I had to clarify this. The chariot means that the two of you might be at a distance from one another, or you might not be in communication right now, or there's emotional distance if you are um, in this person's proximity. But there's something that's kind of keeping you from one another, along with this fighting that's going on here. Let's take a closer look at your energy, and then we're going to look at theirs. Okay, so we have the King of Swords and Justice, which is an interesting combo. To me, this means that you are going to be looking at what is right, what, what feels ethical to you, but there's the King of Swords here, and this is sort of, pref like, it's giving your head preference over what your heart wants. So the King of Swords gets kind of a bad rap. People think, like, he's really cold and unemotional. I would say that he's just more logical. Um, he reminds me of the Doctor from Doctor Who, <clears throat> or Sherlock from the, the same, from Sherlock. <laughs> It's that sort of someone who's just not interested in, like, the fluffy bunny emotional stuff. So it's sort of pulling back on that. Now, this, this even gets more um, back and forth here. We have Nine of Cups. So when you think about this person, you see your happiness. Um, look at the way she's sitting there on the beach. She's got these gold cups behind her. She's got her eyes closed. She just looks content. And here is discontent with the four of cups. Uh, arms crossed, not wanting what is offered. So, I want them so much. I love them. I can't live without them. They are my happiness, and I can't be bothered with them. I think this person drives you up a wall. And you honestly can't decide whether you want to kiss them or slap them. And I totally understand that. But it is a little frustrating for you, I'm imagining. All right. Here we have the Two of Swords and the Hanged Man, which this is some stagnant, um, indecisive, 
should I do this? Should I do that? I don't know. What's going on? I'm just going to hang out here and wait and see what happens kind of energy. Um, you're both at a stalemate where you can't decide what's going on, if you want to move forward, how to move forward, how do you approach the other person? Let's look at their energy and, and try to, to pin this down. So we have the Six of Cups, which is, you may have known this person for a very long time. Um, if you haven't known them a long time, it feels as if you, do, like, it feels as if you just know them inside and out, like you've been with them your entire life. Um, there's also a, this is a bit of a reincarnation card for me. Not everyone believes that, and that's totally fine. But that is my personal perception of this card. But when it's stacked with the Ten of Swords in reverse, um, there may have been an injury here. Like, they, you were hurt, or they were hurt, or, you know, whatever way this resonates for you. There was someone feeling as though they were backstabbed. And I think that they're coming out of that. But um, one of you was feeling really wounded and hurt. And we have the Ace of Cups, which is wanting to, uh, wanting to let that emotion pour out. When you look at the Rider Waite deck, there is this gorgeous cup in the middle of like like a lake or like a body of water. It's almost like a fountain. They want to pour this emotion out. They want to let you know how they feel, how much they love you, how much they need you. And they're regretful. You see the five of cups here. They haven't, you are not seeing eye to eye right now. And that is causing some distress for them. They want to fix this, but it looks like neither one of you knows how to make the move or if you want to make the move or what to do about this. So the energy is stagnant. Now, speaking of offering you a cup, now, in this particular deck, she's got this shell, which I love since it represents the water element, um, which is where feelings are in the directions. Um, water is from the west. It's from that emotion, like it wants to spill out of that conch shell or out of that cup. The Queen of Cups is very intuitive and very giving. Um, she, and don't get caught up on gender, she loves love. She loves, like, her significant other. She's open. She's willing to tell you how she feels. And yet we have this blocked energy here of the Seven of Wands of back the hell off. I don't know what to do about this. I'm not... I'm getting defensive whenever you talk to me about something. It, it's ugh, it's back and forth, up and down, chaser, runner. Nobody knows what's going on. And then we have <laughs> we have the Eight of Wands, which indicates communication. I'm not sure that I love the representation of this card in this deck, but it is a swiftness, um, reaching out to someone. It's a text message or an email or, you know, a phone call. It's getting in touch. And yet we have the hermit here, which is, yeah, I'm going to be by myself. I'm not going to reach out. I'm just going to let this ride. Maybe um, with the lantern here, illumination, like looking for some answers, trying to figure some stuff out. Um, yeah, this reading is all over the place. Uh so I don't know how much clarity that provided. Uh, let me know in the comments if this is your situation, because this looks a little bit crazy pants, and I say that with love. Um, I've had one of these encounters before, and it was very interesting, to say the least. Um, I don't think it was a twin flame connection, but it was damn near close. All right, um, please like and subscribe, and I will see you back here next week. All right, take care. Bye.